Moving on to Cyborg for unpopular opinions and hot takes, we are slowly getting through some of the most popular Teen Titans characters there have been. Now to summarize, a lot of the comments that were left on this community post, 204 comments at the moment by the way, thank you so much to everyone who did leave their thoughts, but there seemed to be two big discussions that went on here. One being what team should Cyborg really be a part of, Justice League, Doom Patrol, Team Teen Titans or otherwise, and two, simply being I like Cyborg or I don't like Cyborg. So, with that being said, let's get into some of your comments. Coherent Rambling says, He and Raven should be a prominent duo, both within the Teen Titans and just in general. It doesn't have to be a romantic relationship. It can be a very close friendship. There is this yin and yang aspect since one's all about tech and the other is all about magic. But at its core, they're both characters who struggle to see themselves as human and so would naturally bond over their personal struggles. I think that is a very good pairing, and as you said so yourself, it doesn't need to be romantic. These could simply just be two characters who become very close with one another in terms of friendship. These are two people who sure wouldn't necessarily understand the supernatural effects going on with them, one being an almost uncontrollable supercomputer and the other being an almost uncontrollable demon spawn. But the fact that both of these characters would feel like outcasts, not just amongst the team they're part of, but amongst the wider world, it would be nice to have these two characters come together more often and realize that even though the root of our problems are much different, the problems that are sprouting from that root are very similar to one another and we can help each other in this situation. I also think socially Cyborg can struggle a lot. Other than Beast Boy, there are times where I really would not think of who his best friend might be or what particular characters outside of the Teen Titans that he really surrounds himself with and even sometimes in the Teen Titans he's not super close with certain characters and this would be a situation to help that. Andre Partridge, Cyborg should definitely get his own personal rogues gallery outside of the Teen Titans and Justice League, mainly because all of the other members of both teams have their own personal set of villains that they regularly have to deal with on top of the actual villains that they deal with within their respective teams. Plus, the only Cyborg-exclusive supervillain that people tend to see or know about are strictly from the 2003 Teen Titans animated series, and that's pretty much it, really. I would argue outside of Robin that a lot of the Teen Titans do have a struggle with identifying who their villains truly are, or even if they can identify a villain of their own in the first place, and Cyborg is no exception. There's only two villains I can really think of that specifically belong to Cyborg. Cyborg. One, there's Atlas, who I'm pretty sure has only been shown in the 2003 cartoon and I think appeared maybe once or twice in a comic book briefly. Then there's Grid, who is just anti-cyborg. He's literally cyborg, just evil. Every single titan outside of Robin could certainly use a buff in villains. They definitely need some more flavor. Maybe brand new characters that people can create, or perhaps even characters who haven't been used in years. Villains who haven't necessarily been given to one specific hero, and and start reviving those characters for, say, someone like Cyborg who desperately needs it. Because then it gets to the point where someone like Cyborg is really only being utilized to his potential when he's part of a team. He doesn't really have anything more to offer when he's on his own. Tired Weeb. Cyborg is one of the most human characters I've seen in fiction. The fact he has less human features and how he lives with them make him one of my favorite titans, more so than Starfire, Raven, Beast Boy. I love all the titans, but I always thought Cyborg was more relatable and I wish he got more spotlight in comics and shows. He's usually sidelined for more popular characters who I personally don't think they really fit, but Cyborg most definitely could. I think it's actually very ironic and it's a good irony, the fact that a character 
character who is so far from being human, even though he was once human, is more human than a lot of the human characters in DC. I think there's perhaps a reason that once you are human, when you have a lot of the human elements stripped away from you, like every single part of your body, all your organs, literally the only thing he really has is some of his face and his brain and some continuities, a piece of his arm. When that all gets taken away from you, you realize how great it was to have that life. And now Cyborg is devoid of at least 95% of that life. Because of that, he is so much more appreciative of people who have it. And even though I'm not the biggest Cyborg fan, I actually think that's why I like him so much in Zack Snyder's Justice League. They literally found a way to give the Tin Man a heart. He is the heart of that movie. He spends that entire film battling this idea idea that I am no longer human. I'm a robotic monster. I have been stripped away of any freedom my human body may have given me. And throughout the film, he realizes the advantages he now has as Cyborg and what he can truly do with the gifts that he can achieve. And I think that is really beautiful for a character like him. There's two comments here I want to somewhat tie together. The first comment here is from Tobias again, who says Cyborg Cybernetics being the origin of Motherbox is the best backstory for him. Along with that is King T, who says he's only important as a Justice League member when Darkseid pulls up. Outside of that, he needs to strictly be a Titan. There is some very interesting give and take here. I do agree. I think his origin coming from the Mother Box is actually quite a genius take, and it would make sense on why Cyborg is so crazy overpowered. Some of the stuff he can do with his ability abilities is absolutely insane. He should maybe even be considered an Omega level in his own right. However, the detriment coming from his origin being from the mother box is it now almost feels as if he is simply just a plot point or a plot device for whenever Darkseid chooses to come into town. And sometimes it almost feels as if that was all he was good for. So whereas I think his origin is good from the mother box, I do also think it is a detriment because all his story now relies on is Darkseid, Apocalypse, and nothing else. Junior Junior. I think the best role for Cyborg is the true mentor figure for newer heroes. He's got experience, has near infinite files on the threats he's faced, and has a rounded power set to balance any other hero no matter their powers. I can see Cyborg becoming the big bro or uncle figure to new characters, like how Piccolo teaches the younger Z fighters. He can still do his own thing, but instead of keeping him stuck in the Titan's shadow or trying to crowbar him into the Justice League, let him be the mentor. I actually really like that idea, and I think he would be one of the best teachers out there in the DC universe. There is absolutely nothing wrong with starting off Cyborg in the Teen Titans, but like I've mentioned in previous videos and other unpopular opinions, opinions, they do seem to have this problem where they keep a lot of the Teen Titans characters as well, Teen Titans forever, and a lot of characters who suffer with that are someone like Beast Boy and Raven, and also Cyborg, other than, of course, the New 52 run. When certain heroes' sidekicks come of age, someone like Robins or Superboys or Supergirls, maybe they are sent over to Cyborg for a limited time to learn and train on particular things that Cyborg can help specialize in. Maybe this is a way to help Cyborg become his own character. Link Lex. He works better with the Titans than he does the Justice League. I think for every comment that someone said they liked him in the Justice League, there was like three comments that said, I don't like him in the Justice League and prefer him as a Titan. I think at the time they put Cyborg in the Justice League, we're always used to having those main five along with an Aquaman or a Martian Manhunter or a Hawkman Hawk Girl or even Green Arrow and Black Canary. And then Cyborg came in and we were all like, whoa, this is really different. How will this transpire? What I'm about to say I've mentioned before, but I'll go into a little 
bit more detail with this. When they made Cyborg a member of the Justice League, I don't think it necessarily made the character more popular in the sense of more people like the character. What I think it did is it made the character more popular in the sense of, oh, I know who that is. Even though their main goal was to add a little more diversity into the Justice League, instead of always knowing the main five, six, seven characters that always belong in the League, let's sub one out and maybe elevate Cyborg, a character who desperately needs elevation, and put him on the greatest team known in fictional history, and see what it does for the character. And unfortunately, like I said, he's become more popular in namesake. I know who Cyborg is, but I still do not believe it was enough to make the character popular enough for people to say, oh, I love this character, let me get more of him. And I think that is where the failure truly lies with trying to force Cyborg into the Justice League. Dogs don't. I personally don't mind Cyborg being on the Justice League, but I don't think he should be a founding member, like in the New 52 or the Snyderverse. So whereas I do absolutely love the Snyderverse, and for me that's Man of Steel, Batman vs Superman, and Zack Snyder's Justice League, I don't really count anything else within that world. And I do love Cyborg's story in that movie. There's even certain things about the New 52, some I like, some I don't like. Even though I love that film, personally for me, if I was the creative, Cyborg would not be part of my main Justice League, or like you say, at the very least, a founding member. The thing with the main Justice League is they are filled with such profound and important characters. Cyborg is not on their level. I don't think he is as important of a character, or at the very least, has the history behind him to back up his importance the way a lot of those other Justice League characters do. I think as the years or perhaps even generations go on, yeah for sure, Cyborg could definitely be a great utilization on the Justice League, or maybe even put him on a different Justice League like a Justice Society. I agree with you, I don't think there is any problem with him being on the League, but it's a matter of him A, being a founding member, and B, possibly not even being on the main League, maybe being on another one. Jack Napier. Cyborg should be a Teen Titan first before being a Justice League member. The cartoon is too iconic, and now without that backstory, it just feels wrong like Harley Quinn existing without Joker making her like that first. This is a very good point, and I know a lot of people always want to look at a comic book accuracy. When you make a cartoon that is so iconic like the Teen Titans, a lot of what has come before it gets overshadowed by how good that cartoon is. And when we see Cyborg in a cartoon like that, that's when things really change, and that's why I also think it was really hard for a lot of people to see him go to the League, because we're so used to seeing the particular attitude and personality of Cyborg from Teen Titans. We have had some brilliant DC animation in the past, and we have some golden representations of these characters for individual terms and group terms, like Justice League, the animated series. That is a great representation of what the Justice League is and is supposed to be. However, I think the Teen Titans cartoon is so good. The representation of those characters really bogged down anything that you see from them in in the comic books, and a lot of what people remember of these characters is that cartoon. That could even be more so why we want to see that version of Cyborg than maybe how they've tried to capture him in something like the New 52. Now for my unpopular opinion on Cyborg, I actually have two. So the first one is, I think it would be a very interesting Elseworld story to see what happens to Cyborg in the future? And I'm not talking 50 years in the future, 100 years. I'm talking millions of years in the future. He is 
technically immortal, even if he does not maintain the current body he has. He will be able to throw his memories and his thoughts into any programming he will want. He will be able to preserve his life in any form moving into the future. I would love to see a story of Cyborg where he does go through his time with the Titans, with different forms of the Justice League, over into the 31st century with the futuristic heroes, and he keeps going down the line until his greatest threat actually appears. His greatest threat, believe it or not, is nothing that he's ever had to fight with the groups and the teams he's ever been part of. What it actually is, is the Earth dying, and eventually getting to the point where technology is ceasing to exist on the planet, and where Cyborg goes from here, and if he can move himself to different planets remotely, or through some sort of Wi-Fi signal or something, you go into the really deep depths of what this story would be. And basically where the emotion would come from this story is you see a young, thriving man who has an exciting future in sports, ends up derailing, becoming cyborg, learning how to be more of a human as a cyborg than he was ever a human, seeing all these friends and loved ones that he has had die time after time after time. And as millions of years passes, he now realizes that for him to survive, he needs to get himself to another planet that utilizes technology. And he needs to say goodbye to this planet that he has lived on for millions of years. And then my second idea is simply, I always thought that Brother Eye should have actually been been a creation of Batman and Cyborgs, and Batman actually uses the mainframe of Cyborg, or some sort of really important technology that Cyborg utilizes, and that's how Batman chooses to craft Brother Eye from. And then what would happen is Brainiac would come in, take over Brother Eye, and that's where Grid will have been created. But anyways, along with my two unpopular opinions on Cyborg, there were some of your unpopular opinions. So as per usual, leave some other hot takes in the comments below on this character if you didn't get the chance to do so beforehand, and also let me know some other characters you would like me to do unpopular opinions for. I will add them to the growing list. But that is all I have for you on this one, everyone. I hope you all enjoyed the video, and until next time, I will talk to you all very soon. I'm the